Hello, I'm Joe. Welcome to our own vegetables, fruit, and herbs. Hello, and welcome back to Joe's Allotment Channel. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is um, some money saving tips for to make your gardening a bit cheaper. Um, what we've done, we've always looked for ways to save money ever since we started gardening 30 years ago, and I think we've started, stayed in that sort of mindset. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. Firstly, I'd like to thank Di for being behind the camera as always, and I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed recently and um, keep sending us comments and ideas. We love reading them all. So, um, when you first start gardening, it's quite easy to get carried away and go to garden centres and see all this lovely equipment, expensive tools, and you think, and you, before you know it, you're spending lots and lots of money. That's if you've got it to spend in the first place. Um, but there are cheaper ways of actually doing things, so, and hopefully that's what we're going to be doing today, showing you some of the ways we've used over the years to make our uh, vegetable gardening cheaper. Um, so it, it's a matter of sort of reusing stuff, recycling stuff, and making your own as well. So that's that's what we're doing today. So when you start gardening, I mean you need some basic tools to start with. You need a spade. That's not a proper spade, but you know what I mean. A fork, a rake, some hand tools, secateurs, and a hoe. Um, I mean you can go out and buy these new. It's going to cost you between 100 and 150 quid. But if you look at things like eBay, I mean if you look on eBay, people are sort of giving away tools they don't no longer need. Um, and if you look on the sort of nearest to your, your home one, you can go and collect them very cheaply. You can get whole sets of tools for 25, 30 quid. Um, the other thing is to talk to your neighbours and friends. Lots of people have got old tools in their shed they haven't used for years. So if they're not using them, perhaps they can let you have a fork or a spade. The other thing is to look for sort of end of season sales. It's always worth looking at the end of season in, uh, in the shops and see what's going on sale. Um, gloves. I think these were originally £4.50. At the end of the season they were down to a quid. So I think I bought sort of 10 pairs, I think. At that price it's a bargain, they're going to last me years. So the end of season sales are a really good thing to look for. Um, but yeah, I mean you need your basic equipment to start with. So by far the cheapest way to actually reduce your cost of growing your own vegetables is growing from seeds. Um, compared to going and buying plants from shops or garden centres, it's a fraction of the cost and it's a cheap way of starting off your own plants. If you've got too many you can swap them with friends, give them to other friends, um, give them to family, whatever, because you always grow too many, you can never grow the right amount of plants. It's very very difficult to grow, you know, I want to grow six cabbages, I end up with sort of 15 or 16 you know, normally. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can pay a lot of money for seeds, or you can buy them cheaply. If you go to sort of the value range of, you know, I buy quite a lot of seeds from Wilkinson's, and they're very, very cheap. I mean, uh, 75p for lamb's lettuce, pound for some um, curly leaf lettuce. Um, very, very cheap. So you can buy, I mean, spinach beet, I think 75p, or 50p. 50p for a packet of spinach beet which contains 230 seeds so that's enough to last for ages and ages and ages and it's got a use by date of 2024 on it so that's going to last for ages um, so look at the value range look at ebay look at other shops like poundland you can buy relatively cheap seeds compared to sort of the um catalogue varieties which go for sort of two pound fifty to three pounds you can pick them up for a pound basically um, and seeds I mean, I've just mentioned the expiry date there, 2024. It doesn't mean throw the packet away in 2024. It means the viability of the seed will reduce. So it just means putting more seeds into your, into your module to grow the amount you need. They normally last three to four years after they're used by date before they completely become unviable. Um, so that's one way of reducing your cost. Yeah, growing from seed is easy. I mean, just follow the instructions on the packet, basically. Um, you can grow in pots, you can grow in windows, um, trays, lots of different things you can grow in. 
Um, I mean, you can start seeds indoors if you've got a windowsill. You can start growing your sort of tomatoes early or your peppers early and then plant them out into the soil later. So it's a very, very cheap method of growing plants. Um, I mean, you look in the shops and they're, I think sometimes the one tomato plant is like two pounds or something. You can pick up a packet of seeds for um, a pound. So it's, it makes uh, great economic sense to do it that way, growing the seed from, growing plants from seed. So another method of um, saving money is propagation. You can save your own strawberry runners. So plant them up, let them root and then plant them on. You can do things like um, berry, blackberries. So if you bury the tip of a Logan berry in the ground, it will it'll form roots eventually and you get another plant. You can do the same with blackberries. Um, you can do the same with rosemary, you can layer it, you can take a long leaf, put it into the ground and it will root. Or you can, there's lots of ways of propagating plants. So if you sort of Google any plant you want to propagate, there is always a method. Rosemary you can also root in um, pots. You cut off new growth, take off the leaves, put it in pots with some hormone um, powder at the end of it. You can make another plant that way. There's lots of ways of propagating plants. So you can propagate uh, plants as well. Cheap way of getting a celery plant. These are grown from uh, shop bought stalks. Um, I think I've done a video on this previously. If you're interested to look that one up. You can propagate comfrey by division as well. Um, so you dig that up and you can separate the roots out, plant them up and they become new plants. You can do the same with rhubarb in the autumn or winter. Dig up the rhubarb, divide the roots and replant it. So there's lots of ways of making your plants uh, go further. And once you are growing plants, you can save your own seeds. Um, I've got pea seeds here. All you do is leave a few extra pods on the plant and then just dry them off and use them again. Same with beans, I've got a whole packet of beans here. Dried beans left on the pod. And same with raw beans. I, I think one, one of the beds at the allotment at the moment is completely from beans we saved from last year, raw beans. Um, and one bed I planted from seed, so that reduced the cost by half. Hopefully this year I'll leave one of the pods, the early pods at the bottom of the plant, leave two of those on each plant and I'll dry those and keep them for seeds for next year. Um, you can even grow plants from packets of seeds. I mean, I've, I've grew some of these kidney beans and they actually germinated and grew in the ground. So it's just a shop bought packet of seeds, packet of um, beans. Um, there's other ways of reducing your costs. Say potatoes, you can actually chop that in half. As long as you've got an eye on each side, you'll get two, two potato plants out of that. Tomatoes is a good one as well. Save your, just shop bought tomato seeds. Just, um, you can save those. Especially something like beefsteak tomatoes. They're very expensive seeds to buy. If you chop a beefsteak tomato out, take the seeds out, dry them off, and then plant them when it's the right time of the year to plant them. It's quite easy to do with tomatoes. You just basically cut it in half and squeeze it out. So there's a little cherry tomato here. So basically squeeze it out, spread the seed out, and then leave that in the sun to dry. And what I'll do is I'll just chop that into sections and put it straight into a pot when it's dry, and it'll germinate. And eat the tomato. Yeah, same with peppers. You can take the seeds out of a pepper plant, pepper, a pepper that you bought from the supermarket, save those seeds and try and grow those. Um, garlic is another one. Rather than buy garlic from a plant merchant, you can buy garlic from a supermarket, plant that. I mean, I would advise though to buy the organic garlic if you can, if you're gonna buy supermarket garlic. If you look out for when it's on special, when the end of the date's coming up as well, it's quite reasonably cheap. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of garlic that they should sell in the shops is sprayed with inhibitor to stop it sprouting. So if you buy the organic garlic, it's less likely to have the inhibitor on it, so it will, will uh, grow into a plant. Right, save your own containers. These are really useful. They're useful for putting the pots in. Um, these ones are useful for collecting strawberries or 
currants or any other soft fruits. You can also use them to little mini greenhouse in the ground. Same with these ones, we, we tend to save a lot of them. You can put pots in those, which keeps them well watered. You can water from the bottom. Um, coffee cups, they're insulated as well. So if you make a hole in the bottom, they, they might make, make a nice pot. Get two in there. Stick that on your windowsill, put some seeds in there, and you're off. Toilet rolls, another good one. We save our toilet rolls. You can use them as a um, plant to plant in, and they just decompose in the ground once you, once you put the plant in the ground. Saves any root disturbance. Got some coal rabbi growing in these ones at the moment, so they'll just go straight into the ground and rot away. We've got some parsnips growing in toilet roll containers which can be then put into the soil and they'll decompose in the soil. So we've got a, we've got a whole roll of this on eBay. I think it only cost me like 10 quid. And cut it up and make it into hoops so you can cover things up that are uh, vulnerable to uh, pests like mainly pigeons. So when I plant the cow out later on in the year, I always put, put these hoops over it and the row cover it over there just to protect it from birds. Um, other free things you can look at is if you've got a stable by you, um, a lot of stables are quite happy for you to, as long as you take your own bags along, go and pick up sort of horse manure. Um, but the only thing I'll say with horse manure is it's best to let it rot down thoroughly before you use it, otherwise you can get a lot of grass seed in it sometimes and it'll just germinate wherever you put it. So I'd compost it somewhere for a, a year, 18 months, let it rot down thoroughly and then you can add it to the soil in the winter or add it to your composting eat gradually. Um, other free things, I mean if you've got neighbours or friends who've got rabbits or guinea pigs, then you know they're quite happy for you to take away their um, uh, cleaning out the cages or whatever runs, rabbit runs, take that away, put that on your compost heap, and that'll rot down and give you a nice feed for your soil that you can use in the autumn as well. So Lots of free things that you know if you think about it, you can find. So, we um, grow Jerusalem artichokes, and at the end of the season, we save the sticks, and they're quite handy. No need to buy sticks, you can re reuse sticks that you've um, grown on the allotment yourself. So, pallets are good for making uh, compost bins, good for using for fencing. Lots of lots of uses for the pallet wood. So if you can get a free source of pallets, that's another thing you can get for free and use. So another good free resource is wood chips. So if you've got a tree surgeon who operates in your area, it's happy to deliver to your to your allotment site or allow, allow you to pick up some bags for free. Then it's very good. You can use it on paths. You can use it as a compost activator. Um, I use it as a mulch as well around sort of um, globe artichokes and currant bushes. Very useful resource. So I'm sure there's tree surgeons all over the country, so I'm sure um, you can contact a tree surgeon somewhere and uh, use the free resource that's available. So another uh, thing you can do is make your own liquid fertiliser using comfrey. So if you've got some comfrey on site, you can make comfrey tea use that as a 3 to 1 ratio to feed your plants so instead of buying tomato feed or vegetable feed you can make your own compost feed and it goes goes a long way to saving some money right another good thing to do is make your own compost it's a cheap way of supplementing um, buying compost as well I use it sort of uh, when I'm repotting stuff I'll, I'll go sort of some of the way with our own compost also use it in the greenhouses to replenish the soil every year. So I've got three bins here. So this one's started. This one's ready to use already. So this is one I've been using. It was sort of up to sort of more than halfway up when I started using it. So use quite a bit of that. That's really good stuff. And this one's the next one to start using. We've got lots of little what they call red worms, branding worms in there and that's full of them that's that's rotting down now nicely so that should be ready in sort of six to eight months time hopefully you've got some uh stuff germinating in there as well 
So yeah, I mean these worms are remarkable really. Um, apparently, I always wondered where they turned up. You look at them, you look at you get a compost heap, and all of a sudden red worms appear. So apparently they're in the soil, and they gradually work their way up when they find good, good conditions, like a compost heap that's warm and lots of food. Then they breed like mad basically, and you get lots and lots of them uh, in there. I mean sometimes I open the lid up, and the whole lid. It's just smothered in branding worms. I share them out between the bins sometimes, especially the one that's rotting down still. So making your own compost, well worth it. Recycles all the vegetable waste from your garden, um, all the vegetable waste from your kitchen. Use your stuff out of the garden that you uh, want to um, decompose as well. So excellent way of getting compost. Another thing to do is collect, collect leaves. I mean, we've got a big old sycamore at the back of the garden, which we thought was a pain in the proverbial but um, we now collect the seat collect the leaves every autumn and we fill up what we do is we put a, a wire basket into the garden somewhere normally on one of the vegetable plots and we collect all the seeds in there they rot down over the winter they rot down and then we bag them up and as you can see it started to rot down already in there it's rotting down I'll leave that to the, to the autumn in the bag. I think we've got seven, six or seven bags of this stuff in the stored away already. So what we do is store it away, let it rot down thoroughly, and we'll spread it onto the um, vegetable beds in the autumn. Especially the ones that are going to have um, maybe tomatoes or cucumbers or sweet corn the following year. So that'll give the soil a good feed. And we employ a no dig system anyway, so that will rot down over the winter into the soil just a sl slight sort of touch of the surface and it will um, start decomposing and the worms will come up and drag it down for you. So that's a good thing to do, collect leaves. So when it comes to pest control as well, there's ways of saving money. Um, I think I've done a video previously on beer traps you can use for slugs and snails. Um, I think we've already spoken about the rhubarb insecticide, using rhubarb, rhubarb leaves to make. We also make our own um, insecticide using oil, chilli, cinnamon and garlic. It's infused in, infused in uh, for a while and then you put wash it up liquid in it with some water and use it as an insecticide spray. So that's uh, relatively cheap to make and it's good for a lot, quite a lot of pests and green flies, black flies, all the other pests as well. So I can use rhubarb leaves to make a rhubarb um, leaf insecticide which is very useful on brassicas um, I've done a video on that previously if you'd like to look that one up Right, so thanks, thanks for watching hope you find some uh, money saving tips there you can to sort of reduce the cost of uh, vegetable gardening I'm sure people have got loads of ideas so if anyone wants to put their suggestions down at the bottom in the comments box we can share them between us we're a lovely allotment community kitchen garden community so let's share our ideas with everybody else um, if you've enjoyed the video give us a like or subscribe or leave us a comment or a suggestion with your ideas so thanks for watching happy gardening thanks very much